Right. Guys, I'm literally dying in this heat today. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to not- shut my window a little bit. So it's like this far open, but I just can't feel the breeze anymore. <laughs> Oh no. oh no it's one of those days where like you know if you have like a a, a long fridge you just open it and stand in front of it mm-hmm. like pretend that you, outside is the temperature inside mm-hmm. inside of the fridge try to make it work somehow mm-hmm. it's crazy temperatures today mm-hmm. it's absolutely crazy temperatures do we need random question yeah, I don't have one. Do, do you guys have one? You can come up with one. If I don't know if I did this one already. If you could make a holiday that would be observed like nationwide by everybody, what would your holiday celebrate and what would you call it? What would it celebrate? Oh my gosh. This is a great question. Um, what would it celebrate? That is hard. Do you have your uh, an answer? Come up with one. Um, Something food related. <laughs> that that's a good one. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a great one. Um, huh? Maybe like. <sighs> <laughs> it's a tough one. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to thoroughly stump you. That was not my intention. <laughs> your mouth was fully engaged <laughs> to say something, but your brain was like, "No." <laughs> um, not there yet. Yeah. Like a. Uh. Um, like a, <laughs> it's not funny. I I, I know what I want. To say. Just say it. Say it. Because I feel like you're just nervous because you, you it might sound crazy, but fine. Uh, maybe like a like a motherland celebration day. Like wherever you come from. Like even if it's if it's different things that make you who you are. Yeah. Um, I, Day that you can just like let those flags fly you yes. know what I mean like what makes you you represent all of it because all of those things represent who you are as a human being mm-hmm. and all of those experiences make day like a, yeah so like a heritage you can celebrate the heritage yes 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 Yes. Jess? See, I'm just thinking all holidays are sort of food related anyway. So, but Do I don't know. I don't know. I feel like a pizza day would be great because, again, like I said, whatever day it was, oh, it was the what meal could you eat um, for the rest of your life for every meal? Pizza. Again, it's versatile. You could, you know, have a, a day to celebrate different kinds of pizzas and it would be called Yes, Jess. I'm jumping on that train, <laughs> so. Listen, it, it's worked so far. Why break it? There you go. Yeah. Um, if I were to have a, a national holiday, um, it would, ce- I think it would, I would make it celebrate, uh, like I'm choosing between three options here. Okay, so pick the one that. World Curiosity Day. And it would be a day where people are encouraged to learn about something new, something different, something they wouldn't normally engage with. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, and and it would be about sharing what you learned with different people that you meet throughout the day. So, Mm -hmm. like, you could walk up to a stranger and be like, hey, so what'd you learn today? And then they'd be like, well... You know, I learned that blah blah blah, and I feel like really random and interesting facts would um, would get spread pretty quickly. Um, yeah, but I think I like it'd be a day that people could potentially come up with some crazy, crazy stuff. 
just to see how far it goes. But either way, you know, it's just it's just all in the name of fun. Like it's not like you're not supposed to like learn the launch codes on World Curiosity Day. It's like <laughs> just something. Um, like, oh, okay. Like fun fact, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. I like that. Yeah, that is good. See, I suck at these random questions. I'm just like, I'm going to blame the heat. All right, no, I'm just going to blame don't. the heat. Do not suck at these questions. going to blame the heat. <laughs> questions, and I still had to had to pause to think. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Don't feel bad. We need all different types of days. You know what I mean? We need all different types of days. The variances of the days, that's what makes it so much fun. Like, I look forward to all three of these kinds of days. Yeah. Very different, yeah. but all needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would Absolutely. enjoy one today, so. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the <laughs> same page. I'm starting to absorb some of Jess's, like, idioms. So I'm like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we get like started? It. Oh, yes. Like oh, yes. Shall we yeah. get started? Cool. Right. So, yeah. hello and welcome back to the Argon AI Twitch channel. My name is Jess. I'm going to be your host today. I am joined by the wonderful Lauren and the wonderful Paula. Hi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, today is Throwback Thursday. Ooh, I can't believe it's Thursday already, by the way. I feel like this week has gone very quick. It has. Yeah. Um, so Throwback Thursday is basically where we focus on, it could be technology, it could be industries or even a way of life. Um, and we basically examine them, how they were in the past, how they are today. And then we look at what a future, uh, with AI would be like as well. I like Throwback Thursdays. They're very cool. Um, so we want to hear from you guys uh, or ladies that are tuning in. So be sure to comment, um, you know, speak to us. Let us know what you think of today's topic. Um, and also, if you want to hear a certain topic on a future stream, let us know. Um, as always, go to argon.com, which is at the top. Download Argon. Check it out for yourself. Um, we also have social media. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Argon AI. Go follow us on there. Keep up to date uh, with all our cool posts that go on there. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash Argon, you can check out the cool content over there. Um, but yeah, so how are you ladies? Apart from the random question, how are you? Yeah, I cannot complain. It's sunshiny here today. Um, yeah, I, I haven't really gone outside today, but the, it, it looks nice out. It looks nice out. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I, I read something the other day, um, yesterday, literally yesterday. Yeah. And it was talking about the fact that there is a... Um, like a great Saharan dust cloud. Basically, you have these storms, sandstorms over the Sahara that kick up a lot of dust into the atmosphere and the wind blows them across the, you know, across the Atlantic. And uh, recently, like, yeah, it, it, there was one that happened recently that's actually going, I think it's currently over the Caribbean. And it basically it, it turns the sky from like a what would be a bright sunny day into something that looks like overcast and stormy. Um, but it also makes because there's like particles of sand and dust in the air, it um, supposedly refracts a lot of light. So sunsets tend to look more orange and more brilliant and more bright as well. Um, but yeah, they're saying this one is one of the biggest dust storms they've ever had, um, and they're calling it the the gorilla dust. Cl- dust cloud or something like that like it's next level i'm sure global warming has something to do with it but um i was just as you're mentioning sky and then outside my sky is a little overcast it just made me think of the dust cloud that i read about gorilla dust cloud that's really cool we had like something where i live i don't know i looked it up but nobody seems to know what it was the other day someone spotted like something falling from the sky and it looked like it was on fire yeah, but nobody knows what it is. So either it's a comet or it's a UFO. Yeah, crazy. It's a meteor rock or it's an alien. Why not? Yeah, like yeah. I don't, I don't think it was big enough to obviously destroy anything. Touch wood. Um, but somebody they they just saw it and obviously like contacted like the the local newspaper and was like, "What is this?" And <laughs> still, people are like, "We don't know." Someone should go and try and find the spot where it landed. 
because if you yeah. can rock off that like more power to you mm-hmm. we we are like casually speaking about this and then watching years to come they're like that was an actual <laughs> <laughs> Like it was something way worse than we thought it was, and it's like, yeah, that was the day that blah 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 got extinct. It'd be everywhere yeah. though. To be fair, it'd be everywhere. Everybody would be talking about it. Where I already see like a couple people like share, you know, like the photo about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's strange. <laughs> Who knows? But I'll keep I'll keep you all updated <laughs> if we find out what it is. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> Right, anyway. Literally just fell from the sky, y'all. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> and it was on fire, so who knows? Right, anyway, let's get started. <laughs> Not get so distracted <laughs> with this. So today's um, theme is storytelling. So again, it's something a bit different. Um, we have kind of hinted on storytelling um, when we talk about gaming and stuff like that. Um but this is a really fun topic. I had a load of fun sort of looking into this. So I'm excited to kind of share the history with you ladies and everyone tuning in. So as I said, be sure to comment along and let me know um, what you think as we go along. So, right, let me get this set up. So as I said, I'm going to go through the past. And as similar to last week, you kind of realise that there's a history, but you don't actually realise how much there is. So, of course, you know, I could spend this whole episode kind of talking about the past. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to try and keep it sort of as straight to the point, as brief as possible. Um, And hopefully everyone tuning in, you find it as interesting as I did looking into it. Um, So I'm just going to credit meetcortex.com, first of all. Um, I got a few of uh, my references from there. So the article or the blog post was called The History of Storytelling in 10 Minutes. It was very helpful. Um, and it's by a gentleman called Matt Peters. Um, So as you would imagine, the history of storytelling goes back thousands of years, literally thousands upon thousands of years. So it started out as like a visual, oral kind of storytelling. So um, the the Chauvet, I believe it's called, cave in the mountains of southern France, um, contains well-preserved cave drawings that uh, that date back 30,000 years ago. 30,000 and it's well preserved um there is a picture currently on the screen of it and it literally looks like someone did it like a week ago it's incredible um and basically on the walls of the cave as I said as you can see from the pictures explorers have found paintings um which cave dwellers used pigment basically to paint um because that was almost like their language back then it was yeah they would just it would be imagery yeah um So, yeah, the paintings would basically depict the prehistoric period. Um, So, you know, it told stories about encountering mammoths, lions, you know, all all that kind of crazy stuff. Um, But it also depicted their everyday activities. Um, So, you know, how they they kind of used homemade weapons, how they used like every inch of an animal to kind of survive and all of this crazy stuff. Um, So it's kind of interesting because you know, it's kind of their own story. It's still storytelling, um, but it's of their own story. So then we jump to 1000 BC, the ancient Greeks, which we we mentioned last week as well. They keep popping up. Um, The ancient Greeks basically discovered a way to use tools to carve messages. So we've gone from pigment paintings to now them using actual physical tools to actually carve, you know, languages into tombs and slates and stuff like that. So, yeah, their stories for thousands of years were communicated only through oral storytelling until they found this technique. Um, The Greeks are also the first known civilization to develop writing and actually apply it to storytelling as well. Um, And there on this website, it uh, mentions this epic poem called The Epic of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh, I believe it's, yeah, that's, I believe that's how you do it. And yeah, basically, this story was about a man named Gilgamesh and a wild man um, named Enkidu, I believe that's how you say it. Um, and he befriends Gilgamesh after a fight and then they set off on a journey to find the key to immortality. Um, and the reason it's called an epic poem is by today's standards, it could fill a 500 page 
um, it could fill 500 pages. So imagine carving all of that out. It's not like you can write it or type it or speak it. Like crazy. Um, But the reason they would do that is because they were so passionate about the oral storytelling. So these stories were written as poems to sort of help the storytellers uh, remember and sort of perform the whole story. It was really important to them to kind of show that passion within the storytelling, Um, which, yeah, the Greeks had all these things going on for them, didn't they? They had the wine storytelling. (laughs) Yeah. Storytelling. They were having a good time. Uh Uh-huh. And then, um, so that is the brief of um, oral visual kind of storytelling. As I said, there is more to it, but I don't want to spend too much on the past. So we're now going to jump to uh, written storytelling. So over the next few centuries, the art of written word and storytelling uh, evolved and developed into cohesive words. So you then had the Bible. Um, So obviously these are the stories, myths, um, legends about kings, gods, prophets, and all of that. But they were sort of tales that were... They had um, religious purpose to it, as we all know. You know, it was lessons with a religious purpose um, and that people actually learned it originally through oral speaking before it was written down. So, you know, imagine all these stories again being told orally. They were sort of like, no, we've got to, we've got to put it <laughs> in a book. We've got to write all of this down. Um, and I think that's really interesting when you go from sort of, um, you know, the passion telling a fictional kind of story to then sort of, using storytelling as a way to educate um this case in in religion um but then yeah you've kind of got uh William Shakespeare moving on from that which we all know that name (laughs) is a very popular name um so he was an English-speaking writer uh actor and poet he wrote 37 plays during his lifetime won't name them we all know we all know the ones Um, But he was a huge stepping stone in uh, building storytelling because his work was expansive, but it was also relatable to a lot of people. Um, And I think, yeah, still says to this day, he's still one of the most um, performed playwright of all time. And, you know, his films are adapted to film as well, which is another medium of storytelling. And then um, just after the era of Shakespeare, We move to France, as we were talking about. We move to France um, and then they create stories that are more known as fairy fairy tales. So um, again, these fairy tales were originally sort of passed down in generations and they were passed on orally. But at this point, again, they were sort of like, no, we need to write them down. Um, And as we know, because we grow up with fairy tales, a lot of the tales were mostly written with children in mind. And they were created to teach children basic life lessons. So, you know, Hansel and Gretel, for example, it was meant to kind of scare children and stop them from wandering off into the woods by themselves. Valuable life lesson. <laughs> but I think it's it's also interesting because it's sort of I think about like when you're a kid as well and it's like your parents are telling you don't do this don't do this but the fact that they have then put it into like a a fairy tale story form then the children are like oh yeah that makes sense (laughs) they're like oh I I follow this stuff yeah yeah um so let me move on to the next one um so the next few ones I won't focus on too much just because I feel like we can talk about these on future episodes Um, So 1700s, you had the first modern newspaper that was created in 1709. Um, And also um, in 1826, we then had the first photograph as well. So it kind of then went from written form to a a visual story, storytelling technique. Um, And the first, it's actually on screen, I managed to get a a picture of the first photograph. Um, It was by a gentleman called Joseph nice for leaps again hopefully I've said that okay um but yeah he was the first person to take a photograph and actually have it shown to the world um and yeah it's just I always find that stuff really interesting especially when you can see it um it's really cool really really cool 
Um, and then we're going to jump all the way to the 40s. So Frank N. McGill founded a publishing company that was called Salem Press. Um, so that was first placed in Fifth Avenue in New York City, um, just across from a, a public library. And I believe he kind of did that because he wanted to be able to access all these different, you know, books and stuff that he'd read over the years, but there was nowhere really where he could do that. So he kind of formed his own place for that. Um, but also another massive part of his legacy would be the development of printed magazines as well. Um, so again, it's a different form of storytelling. Um, but then we're going to move on to um, digital storytelling. So this is the last bit, and then I will pass it over to you ladies just to speak about what I've spoken about. Um, so 1939, TV was invented. As we know, this was a huge hit. It still is. I mean, even, you know, you don't even have to have a TV anymore to necessarily watch TV. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, the TV was kind of designed to look like furniture. So a lot more people were sort of like, let's have it. Let's have it. Um, so that means a lot more people were sort of exposed to that, the, the storytelling of TV. Um, and then going into gaming, because this is the Twitch channel, of course. So the first commercial arcade game was created in 1971 and it was called Computer Space. Very cool. Um, again, there's a picture of it on screen and it is huge. It is huge. It's bright yellow. It's amazing. Um, but again, as we know, video games have kind of become one of the most popular mediums for uh, telling stories, um, 20th and 21st century as well. Um, you know, it kind of presents the world a new way, or it did, it presented a new way of storytelling because video games sort of made it possible for you to put yourself in the character's shoes and also go on these adventures um, and journeys as if it was real. Um, so again, I'm going to get onto that a bit, a bit more later, um, but we're going to move on to the 80s. Music videos, that became a thing. <laughs> Again, you may think, is this storytelling? Oh, in the 80s, yeah. they made it a thing. So, <laughs> I, um, obviously, yeah, the music videos kind of were used to give a deeper meaning to songs. Um, people created shared music videos to spread ideas through music. So it was a mixture of audio and visual uh, that told s stories in a whole new way. And in the 80s, you know, MTV, very popular, um, was it? a huge hit so as I said yeah there's so much more that I could go into but we want to kind of move on to sort of you know what we think AI is going to do for for you know storytelling um so quickly before we move on to how it is now what do you ladies find most interesting about the past of storytelling um, what I really appreciate about the evolution of storytelling is, is the way that storytelling has expanded. Mm -hmm. So, you know, starting from in the much, much, much past, way back in the day, um, to storytelling, being able to, uh, be told by, I don't know, possibly hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics. That's the proper way of saying it, correct? I think so. Right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's a fun visual writing that was popular in yeah. Egypt. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, for for the people to to understand the story are only the people who can see that story. Um, from it going to a printed way to, I mean, obviously starting out before the carving, it, it was something of just word of mouth. Yeah. So for someone to be able to hear the story that you are trying to tell, um, they would have to be within ears length of ears reach of of whomever is is telling the story. Mm -hmm. um, for for it to progress um, through the years, for storytelling to be something that can uh, reach many more uh, varying audiences, the way stories travel, the way stories are are being recorded uh, through through writings and and through. Uh, people's travels who are storytellers um, it's it's very interesting to know that you know stories from way 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 long ago still exist to this day yeah. because because storytelling has expanded you know wherever it, it originally began and and different forms took place but holding on to the stories of the past 
uh, yeah, I, I really love the ability for storytelling to transcend times and places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah um, you bring up a really great point, Paula, um, and, and Jess, really interesting stuff because, you know, yeah, it's sto- I, it's like the way up until now that stories have transformed is that they are able to reach more people. Yeah. Um, and I also think like it's the interesting thing about storytelling up until this point is that so much of it depends on the medium, what you can communicate and how you communicate it exactly. is so dependent on, you know, are you using your mouth? Is it via stone, paper, so on and so forth? Um, and I think it's interesting because you think about the fact that like paper, I think they, they'd had forms of paper in, in parts of, I think Africa, but also China. I know China had printing presses before I think the like European slash Western mm-hmm. world. Um, and it's so interesting because like, those technological, because those, those were technological advances, like being yeah. able to do that. So it's so interesting to think that, like, specifically technology has made storytelling more possible. So I, I you know, it's ex- it's exciting when you think about it, and I and I love the I, I love that, um, you know, you can see the kind of like a prehistoric storytelling, and and that it's so it's so human to tell your story, and we're so our stories are so affected by the tools that we have. That it's it's really interesting to see how things have managed to be preserved, what we've preserved, um, and and you know so so it's exciting to think about where we're going to be going uh, in the future and how that's that's going to be affected by technology as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think yeah, the fact that as you said, like there's so many different mediums that you can have storytelling that you wouldn't necessarily think, or people just think storytelling is just like a book and that's it. When actually, yeah, now we're lucky enough because of the advancements that actually we've got so many different mediums of storytelling. Um, And as we're all creative beings, as Paula says, you know, we all have a different medium that fits us perfectly. So yeah, I think it's really exciting and I'm having fun kind of talking about it with you ladies so far. So yeah, okay, right. So we'll move on to now. So this technically could have been put in the past, but I feel like because it's such a huge thing, um, it just makes sense to talk about it now. So the internet, um, it's such a big part of everyday life. Um, and it's interesting because on this uh, website that I mentioned at the start, it kind of talks about social media and social media accounts, um, meaning that you kind of have access to see everybody's life without actually being there, which is actually a really interesting thing when you think about it. Um, you know, but also the internet itself has sort of created many different mediums. You can have blog posts, you know, you can have apps that are just for posting pictures and all of these different things um so in a way social media has sort of become a modern way that we tell our own stories so you know um 30,000 years ago you know it was sort of like they were using pigment to paint their stories on cave walls Mm -hmm. when now we've kind of got social media to do that Uh, and that's why they always say be careful what you post because um it's almost like a time capsule so you gotta be careful what you put out there (laughs) Um, but I think also the, the evolution kind of, of storytelling, it reflects how people learn um, and communicate, as kind of Lauren was talking about. So I think through sort of oral, written, visual storytelling, I think the voice of narration will always have a place and purpose, um, even, you know, when we advance and when we get onto AI and stuff like that. It's always going to have a place and purpose in the world because everything that we do is storytelling, whether it is our own um you know factual or it is fiction um so yeah though the mediums have changed which we kind of spoke about a second ago uh the core concept of sort of using a sequence of events um has remained the same um and i think one of the big things as well and we've touched on this topic many a time is vr so again we're going to go into the gaming route but as we've sort of taken bigger steps into the modern world and sort of VR and you know that kind of gaming side of things it's sort of creating a social aspect of storytelling um and in some ways you know as again we always speak about is that isn't it funny how back in the past it was a visual thing where it was about passion and a performance aspect when now we're kind of circled back 
to it being very visual as a visual medium again um and I think that is really interesting in itself and VR Mm -hmm. I think there's so much more to come from that side of gaming as well that I'm really excited about um but yeah I think even when you think of like TV and you think of like reality TV that is still story storytelling even though it sort of has hints of both factual and fiction it does its thing so yeah there's so many different aspects now um where again we use storytelling so that was kind of it to sort of sum it up for now so if you ladies have anything else to add now is the time yeah just um just uh I don't know how many years this has been a a popular medium in which storytelling has has transpired but audio how how people are wanting to hear the stories so yeah. people are wanting to interact more uh with stories in in their day-to-day life you know there are many people who try oh, no. to work they are that you know there's always been more um, it's just that people are now able to access storytelling in, in so many different ways yeah. that it can really be a part of their everyday routine, whether or not they have time to sit down, flip through a book, or sit down and, you know, uh, a see, see a device that has a, a, a story lo- downloaded onto the device. Um, storytelling is something that can be digested in, in you know, maybe the mundane acts of, you know, driving to yeah. work or just sitting at home, but not necessarily wanting to, to use your eyes, but really wanting to immerse yourself into the story uh, via via audio, your audio sensories, you know? Mm-hmm. That's so funny. I was, I was thinking, I was thinking just along those same lines, um, you know, that, you know, like Jess said, that circular uh, quality where the more complex means we have of telling stories, I feel like the simpler mm-hmm. stories become because, and, you know, maybe that's a proportionate thing, like, you know, lives get more hectic with more tech, so we want to have more simple. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's really cool that we have that full circle element. Um, and uh, to your, your, your uh, Jess's point about, like, the visuals and how we kind of communicate, you know, we'll share pictures now. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing somewhere in a comment section on one of the platforms um, where they said memes are the new hieroglyph. <laughs> the new glyph because you know, it's a common language everyone kind of knows the origin they yeah. know what it's supposed to mean so when you put it in a certain context you know then you're like oh I get the joke even though you really don't look at the picture but just seeing that picture in different ways you know um I know a popular one is like the the there was a comic where someone talked about like the, I think it was it was titled loss mm. So it, it's a common like joke, whether or not it's funny or not. We're not really discussing that. No. But <laughs> whenever it pops up, people are like, "Oh, that thing." Yeah. But just memes in general, you know how how they become this thing that you know people will just, just. It's essentially like a humor book when you look at certain meme pages, um, and you're you're just laughing and laughing, but all you're doing is looking at like a still image or maybe a few seconds of video. But you know instantly what it is. You know the reference, and 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 people will communicate around it, even though it's just you know, and Im- it's it's supposedly a simple image, but the memes have kind of turned into this common language, um, this this glyph that uh, uh, can be used. And what's funny is that um, they're really easily translatable. So I went to I was on a French meme page, mm-hmm. and you didn't need to actually understand the language or get the history of the joke to know exactly the context to understand why it was funny. And so that's, you know, you're like, it's an image, but you can see how, you know, people of the past were able to communicate because of this, how images kind of communicate this common uh, uh, experience, this human experience. I, I love that that kind of pictorial storytelling brings everybody back to their basic humanity and that's what allows you to connect to it 
I think that is such a good point. And I'm always sad that I didn't think about that myself. But that's the thing. As much as we've gone from, as I was saying in the past, how much it changed from literary pigments on cave walls to music videos. Even now, again, there's so many new, new, I'll say, um, you know, mediums that people will tell stories. And it's funny, the whole meme thing, that's even been turned into a game. I, I don't know if you guys have it over there, um, but there's literally like, you know, um, Cards Against Humanity. There's like a, a game that's called uh, What Do You Meme? So basically you are, you get a, a the meme picture and then you obviously have a bunch of cards that say different things so then you're sort of creating those memes yeah it reminds that's me cool. of that i would totally play that that's cool yeah same it sounds like a, a lot of fun yeah well you know maybe i'll have to pick it up and then when we finally are able to travel that's all we're doing yeah. <laughs> we're creating our own stories our own meme stories yeah, and I think um, going back to Paula's point as well, even like um, audiobooks, but you've you've got podcasts now as well, um, which yes. is a form of storytelling because not you know all podcasts are again factual speak about you know certain topics. They kind of go into like Harry Potter and all of these different things, um, and I think that's really cool as well. There's just endless mediums now to tell stories, or there always has been. Um, it's just yeah establishing them um but yeah we'll move on to the future um and sort of talk about how we kind of envision AI sort of adapting that even further so how I personally think of it is I think AI is really going to help with sort of the research aspects of storytelling and again that could be you know you're physically writing a book um or you know with a filmmaking process that's where my brain went straight away again I won't go too much into filmmaking because again that can be a whole different topic on its own but I imagine like an AI helping um locate like stock footage imagine and I speak from personal experience not having to sit there for hours upon hours searching <laughs> for the correct stock footage and AI can kind of do that for you um and I think editor brain as well I'm thinking that an AI could potentially help with the the editing process process by ingesting sort of the footage audio um but even if you know for instance let's say um I've decided to get Argon to come and help me Argon will know what I'm like um so Argon will kind of know right she likes to have it set up this way so even starting an editing sequence for me incredible that would be the dream um, and then there's an article from jointviews.com and it's called uh, What Impact AI uh, Will Bring, Could Bring to Storytelling. Sorry. Um, annoyingly, it doesn't credit who actually wrote the blog post, which is really annoying. So whoever you are, you're still getting credit. Um, but yeah, it briefly goes through different points. So it sort of talks about how stories are sort of generated as a result of observations. So we're kind of talking about fiction. Um, and that kind of comes from certain triggers or trend patterns that we humans see. So imagine that we always talk about AI having bias, but imagine having an AI that could help rule out that bias. So you're kind of there thinking, overthinking, no, this isn't going to work because X, Y, Z. Imagine that AI being able to come in and sort of say, no, that works fine. <laughs> you're worrying too much. Don't worry about it. Um, but then also the AI could sort of help with tracing target audiences uh, for a story. So, you know, it could kind of find out what kind of story would intrigue them personally. Um, and then I was even thinking, imagine it monitoring certain reviews um, to, to certain like similar genres and helped you adapt your story because you know what the target audience is. And then they're like, well, this book is kind of similar and they like this, this, and this. So your AI, again, being able to guide you within that process. Mm. Um, and then I sort of went back to VR gaming. And again, as we've said, is imagine having our, an AI like Argon in-game with you. So again, it's like your super companion is there throughout the whole thing. Um, but it sort of adds to that story of the game. You know you've got your companion there. Um, and it sort of makes the game even more immersive than it already is. Because as I've said, VR, again, 
doesn't need to necessarily be like realistic graphics because it's physically over your eyes. You can't see anything else. You're immersed. Um, hence why you see the videos of people that are doing like tightrope things. They fall off and they actually fall over because you, you your brain, it tricks your brain. <laughs> so again, imagine sort of having your AI there to make that already immersive experience even more immersive. Um, but that's just a few of the ideas that I kind of thought of. So um, what do you la ladies think of AI in storytelling and what kind of things do you envision AI sort of doing for various storytelling industries? Mm. Um, well, um, I see storytelling being even more accessible to, to everyone uh, through artificial intelligence. I can see, I can see an AI such as Argon, you know, uh, partnering with possible uh, publishing companies. That then all of the books that that are a part of said company are loaded into the Argon system. Yeah. You know, uh, if if you have children or if if you yourself want a story uh, that has calming effects or you want an encouraging story or yeah. uh, just something a little bit uh, like maybe around around the holiday times you want one of those heartwarming like hopeful stories you know you could just speak to your argon and be like hey argon read me read me an encouraging story yeah. or you know those poems that that really uh really push you to to uh to get to that next level in your day-to-day -day. um I, I do believe there is a, a special connection between hearing hearing these things um that is how storytelling originally began so doing the full circle moment of going back to the basics but in a way that that it is connected so seamlessly through your life that it seems easy, but actually it is the artificial intelligence brain coming in and making it so that the, the, the aspects that you interact with is easy and it looks flawless and it looks seamless, but actually there are, there are many different processes, many different processes happening to give you that, that just, it was so easy. I needed a story to calm me and sure enough, my, my house through all of the speakers you know, I'm I'm listening to this story to calm me as I'm going out of yeah. the door, and and that story transferred to my car, and I'm I'm feeling even more calm and ready to take on the day. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I see it being that experience of, you know, the storytelling is always going to be an incredible art form, but but how we access that storytelling for it to be something that everyone can access without having to say buy this book for however much money to get it to read to you that same one story over and over yeah. and over again you can have any story you need stored into the system of argon and just give you what you need when you need it yeah yeah and um so i'm just writing a note here so i can remember to say it okay everyone uh tuning in be sure to comment as well what you see um, AI yeah. bring into storytelling and even what sort of your favorite mediums of storytelling are as well mm -hmm. let us know for sure yeah um it, it all I think links back to that point that that was said What's... earlier um and that um Paul you referenced as well it's like what AI becomes is yet another means of distributing story yeah you know whether it's TV or photo or book or audio book, it's like, okay, well now AI is a new means, you know, because there's no reason you can't just say, hey, Argon, tell me the story of Moby Dick or Anansi. And then, you know, the AI, Argon in this case, is just telling you the story like any other thing, you know, like, you know, that it's so-and-so degrees outside, you know, um, being able to kind of on demand have that kind of storytelling um, experience is is a different kind of immediacy. It's not let me go to the app and open this. It's not you know uh, let me make sure I download and have an account and blah yeah. blah blah. You know mm. it's 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 you know you can you can you can. There are so many ways, uh, as mentioned before. There's so many ways that um, stories can be told, and you know 
being a part of the story, I think is one of the most exciting things, you know, there's no reason why you can't tell your AI, hey, so you know how the main character's name is Hilda? Change it to, let's say the account holder's name is yes. Carrie. So then they just, you know, make, make, put, put Carrie in there. So then it becomes a story of Carrie, right? Um, and so you're literally inserted into the story. Yeah. Or, you know, as, as was mentioned with the video games, where, where because your AI is with you all the time, that moment when you go into gaming and now your AI and you are in the game, you know, there's so much that can be experienced. Um, and and it, it really blurs the line between the imagination and the reality. And I think that's the thing that we as humans in so many ways uh, aspire to do or to become. It's to, to kind of thin the line between the universe we imagine and what we actually exist and live in. Um, and so, you know, an AI can help further enhance that storytelling. You know, the AI can, you know, if you're dealing with, you know, let's say the setting and a story changed, there's no reason the lights in your house can't change yeah. to match the story. Ooh, that's amazing. You know, it becomes, it becomes like you said, Jess, that, that immersive experience. Um, and, and Paula, you make, you, you brought up such a good point with kind of this tailored storytelling, you know, um, I think one of the big things that we have right now, because we have such a glut of stories available via every streaming service, every, you know, possible means now i don't know if you ladies are like this but i know it happens to me where i'll be uh kind of looking for a story and i get choice paralysis because there's just so many things yes all the time um, yeah exactly. and so you know i know that certain streaming sites and services like let's say a netflix or a hulu or whatever um, you know, they will have, they'll try to create new, um, headings and kind of mix it up and come up with new, they have algorithms that'll help kind of change and, and recategorize things to see if this might be a little more to your liking, or that might be a little more to your liking. Um, and you know, that's just a part of machine learning and learning your habits and your preferences and your tastes. Um, and that becomes a part of AI. And so, you know, I, I love what Paula said about, you know, being able to say, I need a story to make me relax, or I need yeah. a story to entertain and excite. Um, and being able to get that from your AI who knows you differently from the other person's AI that knows them. And, yeah. and so, yeah, getting storytelling. Right now we have storytelling on demand, but it's like, imagine it's storytelling on immersion, like full yes. immersion um, and, and directly keyed to your, 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 temperament at that time mm -hmm. so it's it's really exciting to think what can be done and because ai is such an at least ai like argon we'll say because obviously everyone isn't on our isn't Definitely. like what we do but yeah. um ai like argon being device agnostic as we are where we don't we don't have a preference it could be on this operating system or that operating system um it allow it allows for such a connectedness a hyper connectivity um, and so being able to tell stories while connecting to such a vast array of other mediums, storytelling, you know, why can't a lamp be a part of storytelling? Your lamp is a part of how this story is communicated. Um, your air conditioning, you know, yeah. the story about a hot room. So suddenly your AC goes off. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then you about you know somebody climbing the arctic and so your ac blasts to like non-stop full force you know, obviously you'd have to give it permission for <laughs> yeah yeah I'm willing to pay those bills as well but um you know things like that that really you know it's like what they talk about with movie theaters where it's like smell a vision or um yeah you know, uh, that kind of haptic seats where you know um i don't know if you've been to I think it was Disney World or Epcot or one of those places that have yes. this little theater. But like they have a, a thing where if uh, in the movie there were like mice crawling across the floor, the wind crawls, yeah. tickles the feet. And you feel like, you know, so an AI could do that. But the difference is taking that medium from being this massive thing. Again, because AI is about elevating lifestyles. It goes from this is only available to a select few or to the major corporations down to, oh, everyone can have these elevated experiences now and you can share them with your friends or your family in household. Um, storytelling is boundless yeah. when you have something as adaptable as artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And that's 
that's just made me think of something as well because I think it was last year or the year before the rapper Logic he wrote his first book and he also then created an album alongside it um so obviously rather than you'd have to physically have the book and then you know go onto Spotify or whatever streaming and then physically press play so imagine as you were going into Lauren like that full immersive thing where you know all your lighting colors that's changing but also are on playing the the correct song to the part that you've got to which exactly. is incredible yeah you know who else did something like that um i believe it was virgil ablo i don't know if he released a book that was specifically a fashion book for off white or if it was mm. for uh louis vuitton oh. but he um, what he did was he had this um, hard plastic insert yeah. where you could actually pop out the insert and it was a record. So you could then put it on a, on a, on a I think you oh. put it on like a hard surface, um, something that's designed to be like a automatic, how do I explain it? Basically something that's a right, a backing to support it and you can put oh. it in the, in the record player and mm. then it spins and you're actually kind of hearing it on this at the same time. And Whoa. so when you think about that, and I think about the fact that for my for my book, Rafe and Rose, uh, The Death Letter, the first book, yeah. I recorded a song for that, yeah. right? And so they tie together. So, you know, it very much, storytelling is a multimedia thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it, it's absolutely cool that being able to merge things like the AI playing the sound while you're also watching the... Uh, not watching, but listening, or potentially watching the the, the, the story unfold. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really exciting. That makes me yeah. like so excited. The fact that like imagine you're in bed and it's like the book. It's currently raining in the book, and then all of a sudden, you know, the speaker just starts doing the rain noise, and you just feel fully there, but from yeah. the from the comfort of your own bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, I can see you doing the novels very different. Oh, I was yeah. Gonna say, I could, I could see Jess like doing like a scary book readathon, and I'm like, oh. you know what? Yeah. I don't know if I can join. I don't know if I can partake. That it so, just like, does like, oh yeah, no. Uh -uh. Like, that like little sound, it, it would be too much. See, I don't know if much. I could do that because it's not mean, like I that concept though. I'm, I'm here mm -hmm. for it. There would be people that absolutely love that. But I think for me, because it's sort of like, if I'm watching a scary movie, I still know that it's on screen. It still made me jump or, you know, I, I still might be scared. But the fact that the like noises are potentially coming from, you know, like the, the living room, like that speaker, because it's like a distant noise. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'd be like, no, covers over. Oh, no. But imagine if you had friends over for it. Yes. Yeah, it would be a different kind of fun, though. It's like a movie in your house playing out. I mean, I... Uh, I would actually be so here for that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my terrifying. gosh. Terrifying. Everybody, make sure, you know, we don't advocate. We don't advocate imbibing any substances. Please drink responsibly. Yeah. But I just could imagine that some people would find themselves in a very unique situation if they came over for wine and drink and a horror reading. And then uh, the story played out in the house mm -hmm. that would be, be, uh, be kind of cool though yeah that'd it's like cool. those kind of uh events people do you know where they like go to manners and then they dress up yeah so it takes exactly. that like a who did it type thing like yeah. oh my gosh like a yeah. mystery oh that'd be great that'd be really really fun you could yeah. do like your own your your own like mystery dinner at your house oh that would be so much fun so much, oh fun. so much fun. <laughs> there is just so many things when you think of it. And it makes me so excited because maybe not the scary one, but yeah, again, bringing in, you know, your friends, family and making it like a night of it. You're bringing everyone together, but you're having so much fun. And again, it's not, yeah, like necessarily you're having to, again, physically stare at a screen the whole time. Everything's happening without you having to like touch anything it's all just going on in the background yeah oh christmas christmas stories and like you hear little bells and like <laughs> <laughs> you can so see our personalities with which stories we gravitate to more 
you know like yeah or it'd be interesting mystery yeah i was like christmas <laughs> you just have elf going <laughs> all, all go. year round so go. frozen there's like a yeah Frozen. I feel like she'll unleash you. Like, oh my gosh, Santa's. Am I frozen? <laughs> now you're not frozen. Now you're good. Oh. <laughs> Wasn't sure if you were talking about like the movie or I'm actually frozen. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, we met you. Yeah. Am I, was I frozen for a long time? You were t- when you were kind of going into the experience you'd love to see from, uh, from like the Christmas, like gotcha, yeah, yeah. Um, the jingle bells, the reindeer yeah. running on the roof, you know. Quick mention, um, I'm looking at the com- comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have a comment from Ashy D ninety five. Hello, Hi, Ashy D ninety five. Um, and they're saying hello. I think it would be amazing if your AI could read your favorite book to you. So you could listen on the go or at work. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. We're all on the same page here. This mm-hmm. is amazing. Girl. Same page. Hey. Uh, <laughs> I also just thought of another really cool idea. So um, Black Mirror for Netflix, they did like an interactive sort of episode yeah. where, yeah, you would physically have to kind of press on the remote. But imagine something coming up on screen or even like, you know, your your speaker that's linked to Argon and it kind of, it says to you, right, what are you going to do? And then again, you don't have to physically click anything. You can just say, I want it to do that. And then it happens on screen. Imagine. Wow. That's cool. Obviously, there would be some limitation. <laughs> you can't just be like, right. Yeah. Infinite possibility. Yeah. Unless, well, it would be possible. It depends on if you're talking about something that's VR and can be kind of real time. Yeah, created. exactly. That's what I was going to say. If it's sort of graphics in a way, obviously, if it's been shot with actual humans, likely not possible. But yeah, if it's graphics and it can be created in real time, oh, that, yeah. We're here for this. I'm so down for this. The possibilities are endless. Literally, it's just the the thing of, you know, how creative is your brain willing to go? Because artificial intelligence can really, you know, support those ideas, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, yeah, just to sort of round it all up, I think, yeah, the fact, again, we were talking about, you know, ancient Greece and they're physically carving stuff to, you know, a future with AI where, again, you don't have to even pick up anything. You can just use your voice, which, again, goes back full circle that, again, it's this sort of oral experience. And I think, yeah, storytelling's always going to be a thing. It, It can't not be a thing. It's so important. And I think it, it's, oh, go, go, go. Yeah, of course you can. I'm thinking about it as well. You know, storytelling, one of the mediums we didn't talk about was dance and movement. Oh, yeah. Right? So that can very much be a part of how an AI helps sell, uh, AI can tell a story. Because again, you know, you can have things like motion sense and whatnot that allow you to indicate something via an action or a movement and then couple that with the virtual and then you you can literally be acting out the st- It's just, you can... Literally, oh, yeah. there are so many things that you can do, and yeah. it's like almost never oh. ending. Yeah. So one more thing like artificial intelligence could be your scribe. You know, back in the day of the long time ago of storytelling, there was someone, mm-hmm. oh, you were okay, perfect. Take it away, then. No, Take no, no, you can go, you can go. Oh. <laughs> um, how, how there were scribes a uh-huh. long time ago to make sure that these stories um, survived and thrived. Um, artificial intelligence can be your own scribe um, as you are finding, you know, inspiration at any moment, you know, your AI could just be like, okay, I did. Okay. I, you, you want me to write this just to confirm, just to confirm I have the permission to yes, write that, save it for the book. Mm-hmm. And yeah. But also, <laughs> in the sense of coding as well that can be seen as storytelling um and actually we know of a company that has an initiative um argon 
has an initiative called Vision 2020. And if you go to vision.com, uh, I do, <laughs> we keep doing this. We keep doing this. So if you go to argon.com forward slash Vision 2020, you can sign up. It's free. You don't need any background experience. You don't yeah, need so to have. Can you, repeat the, can you repeat this thing? Because it, it glitched a little bit. So <gasps> just repeat the, yeah. So I'm just going to do it all again. So go to argon.com forward slash Vision 2020. It's free. You don't need to have any background experience at all. You don't have to have a degree. You can be a newbie or you could be, you know, you know everything about coding, um, but you can still use that IDE for free. And, you know, again, you could use the Argon platform for gaming. You could create a story within a game or, you know, you could create a neuron that's all about storytelling in, you know, written sort of form. Um, So definitely go check that out. Um, you know, coding and AI is for everyone. I mean, again, ladies, I think we've done it with this topic. This storytelling relates to so many different people. So we really mean when anybody can get involved in this space, we truly mean that. So we recommend going to the Vision 2020 initiative, signing up and get started today. You can start right now. Go, go, go. Ah. We both did the thumbs up. <laughs> You were just laggy though, Paula. Oh, so mine just looks like, yes, Lauren, yes. That's funny. The lag life. The lag life. Technology. The way of the future. It is the way of the future. Mm -hmm. She says as she lags. You know what, what, that'll be changed soon. So it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about progress here. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Progress. Very true. Good. That's good. That's good. Another one. She's feeling loud and clear. No lag. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth is honestly so dry from this heat. Like I. <laughs> hurt. You poor thing. You know where it just like your it gets stuck. That's what's happening right now. So oh, I think. Get stuck. <laughs> yeah. So I think we have. We should wrap it up. Yeah, so I think we've pretty much covered quite a lot of the history to now to even what we envision. Um, you know, AI doing for the the storytelling, well, different storytelling mediums. Um, so you know, still feel free to sort of comment, let us know what you think. Um, go speak to your friends and families about it, and then go find us on our social medias. So uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at argon ai and you know you can pop us a message tweet us message us on there and let us know what they think of this conversation as well um but yeah that is it for today ladies so thank you so much it's been a really good episode today i've had fun um but as always be sure to follow us friend us on twitch so you get notified every time we go live as it is more fun when you get involved in the live stream as we said you can kind of get involved in the conversation as it happens um we will be back tomorrow but we've got a a time change so tomorrow is our weekly roundup where yeah we basically round up all the streams that we've spoken about on our twitch channel this week um but we are changing the time so we will be back tomorrow at 7 p.m eastern standard time which is midnight british summer time so come on it's friday you can join us if I, yeah. if i'm here everyone in the uk you can be here too um, <laughs> But yeah, again, be sure to check out Argon, go to argon.com, download Argon for yourself, try it out, um, and also look at the Vision 2020 initiative, sign up. As I said, it is free, you've got nothing to lose. Um, And our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Argon AI, be sure to follow us on there. Got a YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Argon, subscribe um, and see all the cool content we've got on there. But that is it. So thank you very much for watching and we will be back tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.